Hello world. Patricia O'Connor and Frida Reba Dorsey. We are roaring back on the poor little dark. I think you can see those blooms, those white cascade of blooms there on my uh, on my Japanese wisteria. That was Frida Reba Dorsey. And here is our balcony. It is Wednesday. It is our midweek break. And today is major updates, major, major, major updates. One, uh, I just showed you a very dark wisteria because the iris is still, if this camera is still set on the daylight settings that I had just, I just programmed it for. I didn't really think about that. We're locked off in those settings so it doesn't ping pong back and forth. Meanwhile, uh, meanwhile, if we had better exposure, you would see a, a little wiener dog going to town on what's left of my mug of coffee. Um, she is such a cute little scamp. All right, thing number two, blooms. Yeah, this is the Chinese wisteria, and this is it in all of its, uh, and yeah, I was not deceived. The difference in uh, foliage and blooms can be seen. Bloom, foliage, bloom, 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 foliage, foliage, bloom, 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 foliage. So that's fantastic. Uh, early indications are it looks purple. We'll see. It could be purple. I was told it would be blue, but we'll see. Um, why did it bloom this year after uh, going on four years? A couple of things, it may not have been ready. It could have been uh, the blooms that you see would have been buds that formed on the tree last year. If in the fall, I went back and cut back the new growth, it's possible that you cut off the branches with the blooms on them, right? So last year when, you, when I cut back the tendrils that were four or five feet long I may have removed buds that would have bloomed for me last year and maybe this year uh, they were placed differently and I didn't or this may be the first year we had that option and we just did everything we just did everything the way we were supposed to but this is the early stages and a lot of y'all have been asking to keep for me to keep you guys posted as to its progress and I would say from all looks of it as long as I keep it watered and I do um we should be looking at a prolific amount. Whatever this thing is going to do, we should see it in all of its glory in the next no time. I mean, in the next, you know, during the next week, I would guess. So, yeah, today when I came out on the balcony, I came out a little late. We slept in a little. So I came out uh, mid-morning and everything was dry. We had watered yesterday before we left for work. And then that amount of time, everything had just soaked up all that water and transferred all of that water to its foliage and everything is looking greener and everything is looking happier and healthier and um and it's just really exciting and good to see all the way around i can sit there and back up and show you more of our uh, bald cypress trees or our um swamp cypress as they are continuing to flush out um, sweet pea is starting to um, respond to its sunnier location and it's starting to green up a little and as we can see it's got lots of new candles on it we won't be doing anything to those this year so it can have um, it just can push 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 everything it wants to push uh, it got a lot last year I started working on a um, shari feature right here and we repotted it and we changed the angle and we chopped about half of it off last year so that was a lot uh, probably maybe even borderline well probably too much but but if we uh it's taken the year off and we're just going to feed it and water it and uh tell it it's been doing a great job because it has this coastal oak is continuing to just push out stuff we had said early in the going that this year our goal was was to fill in 
some of the numerous gaps that this tree had in its foliage. It's got its back to us. It's facing the pool right now. Um, yeah, it's facing the pool. But but what we were looking at, we were looking at big gaps in the foliage here and down here and over here. It looked like somebody that had um, just, it just looked like something with a really patchy coat, you know. So uh, our goal this year was to fill in those gaps in that. And that kind of makes it overall a little bit more pleasing. Although that doesn't in itself make for bonsai. That can just as easily make for topiary if you've got this round bubble shaped canopy and then you just kind of go through and clip it into that shape. What kind of makes it, you know, good bonsai is when you still have light going in there and you can still see the it shows off the uh, limb structure instead of hiding it with leaves and that um, it one doesn't look manicured like that but looks natural but at the same time you can still see all the structure and all of that structure is impressive that's what comes with time this year what we get to do is try to fill in a lot of our holes and um, whereas that's not necessarily a uh, refinement that is one stage of uh, building structure and um, it will certainly look a lot better at five feet when we have a full canopy to work with somewhere after this when we start cutting this back after that that stuff will flush out again and then it'll be necessary to go back into this oak and start pruning that back so whereas right now we are less picky about our rules of three and we're less picky about our upward facing branches or our straight downward facing branches and we're less picky about those because right now we need uh, a lot of branches and a lot of leaves and a lot of and a lot of photosynthesis and we need to achieve a lot of growth to rebuild this canopy so we're allowing all of it to go and to just go and push out and do whatever it wants to do and then at some point when we have too much then we'll start pruning that back to uh what's more correct and even then if pruning back to what's correct leaves us with more gaps we'll probably let it go maybe one more season so yeah that's got us that's got us on our coastal oak i think that including last year maybe we're three years away from having this guy um, presentable at two feet instead of five feet, but I'm, I'll take it. I'm really excited about that. The one just to the left of it, our, uh, our cork bark oak, it's pushing out a whole lot too. I will be doing it differently. We are kind of in the same boat with that we're rebuilding a lot of canopy on this tree. I even had a little PM issue at the end of last fall. But um, we'll still do it like I've been doing it. As you can see, it has all those really long shoots on it. This guy is going to make really long shoots on it. And we're going to let them go all year long. And I'm going to try not to cut anything off. Nothing. Nothing off. Maybe some, and even then, some of the stuff at the bottom that I'm letting fat up the trunk a little, that'll only go so long. But back to this, at the point at which all of these branches begin to elongate out too much, I'm going to start chopping those back and we'll get a second and a third flush out of this tree because it just tends to do that. That's my cork bark I'm talking about and what it does in response to feeding and watering and all of that stuff. So it'll get a little bit more unmanageable if we don't uh, pinch it or prune it. And um, um, in, in the course of the summer, but the good side to that is, is that just leads to more ramification quickly. I think I couldn't say anymore how pleased I am with all of our little pine trees. There, you know, everybody that we made it into this spring with is just greening up and starting to um, and starting to slurp up water like nobody's business, and that's all in all such a positive thing just going to pan up to our trident maple we can see it's pushing out it's got little red little red little green salmon color to green color little shoots all over it um we're going to wait till april or may and then we're going to do a, a a show that i'm really excited about 
where I'm going to do an air layer on this guy and I'm really looking forward to that. Now, to me, this is kind of our star. This is kind of our star of the show today. This is my Ponderosa Pine collected from Deadwood, South Dakota. It is a Yamadori tree. It was collected at high elevations, like uh, 5,000 some odd feet up. I don't have it close to me, but it's written down. It is written. And um, so far, I've taken possession of this tree uh, last summer. So at the end of last summer, so I probably had it eight or nine months. And in that amount of time, all of these branches were above above here. They were all way up here when I got it. And I pulled everything down. And uh, I worried because when you pull branches down like that, you're changing the hormonal allocation. Things that thought they were dominant now aren't getting that same kind of vibe. And I thought by... Uh, the fact in some cases will mix up a tree some some things sometimes when you push something down far enough the tree will will kill it off or sometimes you push it down to where it gets overshadowed and doesn't get so you have to be aware of all of that and um i knew that i was uh taking some chances with some of it but the strongest stuff was on the top and the weakest stuff was on the bottom and i tried to position it all to where everything would get adequate light and then I just kind of bit my luck, knuckle and hope that I got away with it. At that point, uh, we saw that one of our 90 degree Octobers was coming around and uh, we knew that that wasn't good for our ponderosas or any of our other trees, frankly. And it was about that time I reached out to another bonsai gardener to, uh, to ask about recommendations on how to make sure this Ponderosa stayed happy and healthy and didn't run itself into the ground because of possibly being in the wrong growing environment for its species. And what I was told was to seek Peter T, who had a, a bonsai garden uh, further up north. The tree would get colder temperatures during the winter and it would properly shut down and I wouldn't have to worry about it um, succumbing to uh succumbing to the lack of winter and then a really really strong summer which would cause it to put out more flushes than it's supposed to and then the following winter it doesn't go into you know it doesn't go into dormancy the way it's supposed to and then after that they die so to avoid all of that we overwintered it and while we had it there it came time to pick it up it was scheduled to be dropped off in november and picked up in um february uh, well, just before February, I reached out to Peter T and asked him if he did grafting. He said yes, and he gave me a price of what he would charge to graft this tree with Japanese black pine. This metal tag reveals, uh, tells us which donor, says it's, it's my name on it, plus which donor Japanese black pine tree came up with the if you can see the little pieces of green painter's tape, I believe that's uh, frog painter's tape. It's the green colored stuff. Anyway, it's painter's tape. And those are all shading off the, uh, the uh, graphs from direct sunlight for a little while. Come June, I'm supposed to open up those pieces of paper tape exposing the uh, roll the uh, rolled up buds they will be rolled up in in uh in uh, plastic film you know that that film that you do grafting with they'll be rolled up in those i'm supposed to ventilate them to make sure that they don't rot in there from the uh from the moisture coming into the summer months around june and then cover them back up and then i was told that um we would have the option to uh, bring it back for more grafts if we needed, but everything was grafted and then has the graft pretty much across from it. So that half of those takes, we're going to get Japanese black pine grafted. And something that is not, maybe not overly apparent is all of these grafts is where all these green, where this green tape is. And it's all farther back on the tree. Notice we don't have any grafts hanging out here 
on the ends, right? It's all up here close. That will be the future tree. All of this other stuff, that Ponderosa, that's all the stuff that it did for years by itself. That in order to try to compress or compact your bonsai tree, you have to you find yourself trying to fold that up, zigzag it back and forth. And on good good quality bonsai tree, they're always shorter, more compact than that. And when you see stuff like that, it's usually going to be a deadwood feature, you know, a gin or a shari or something. But um, that is an indication. All of this really long stuff is an indication of its uh, life alone in the wild without somebody applying bonsai tactics. And what that also means is in order to compress that tree some and not have it all just way up in the air with its hands in the air like it just doesn't care. And that's really kind of how they look to me when I see that sort of thing. I'm going, your hands in the air like you just don't care. Um, and when you do that, that's not really necessarily aesthetically pleasing, but then pulling everything down means that you're, you're bending it back and forth, trying to make it not look too straight, and it's zigzagging back and forth in front of your main feature, which is the trunk. So at that point, we'll make decisions. Uh, this time, not this time, not this coming summer, but next summer, I will uh, cut back half. This is as per the guy who grafted it which is Peter T, and we're gonna go by Peter T's instructions. Next summer, not this coming next month, but next summer, a year and a couple of months away, I will cut back half of the Ponderosa stock. And by that point, our Japanese black pine stock will be coming more dominant uh, on the tree. And uh, that's the point at which we can start cutting back our Ponderosa stuff. Eventually, uh, I'll probably kind of mix the teachings. Uh, the teacher that I'd been listening to prior to having this one done was uh, Andy Ryan. I don't think he, one of them said anything that contradicted the other. If we came across any contradictions, I would probably lean on the side of the grower who was closest to where I live thinking that possibly the difference in opinion has to do with the difference of geography. That would be one thing that would cause one person to say, do it this way, and another would say uh, to do it another. But one thing in Andy Ryan's teaching was he would say, uh, in a case where you've got a tree and it's on its second repotting, in other words, it's no longer in a, a wooden box with its original soil and some and some substrate, but it's it's still got some original soil in there from the second potting, but that's where we're at. To not remove all of the last of the ponderosa foliage to make the the grafted foliage more and more dominant and let the pond and let the original foliage have lesser and lesser and lesser role but don't remove it all until you do the final repotting and the final repotting would be when we put it in a bonsai pot not just change out this substrate and put it back in a training pot so uh that would put me repotting this in a couple of years and um at that point, I would probably have to cut back all of those, all of those twisty ponderosa vines, limbs, not vines. Although they could make some really, really cool gins, I think if we're trying to make the um, the grafted stock become more dominant, we probably don't want to run the risk of uh, of uh, branches that haven't completely died but have no foliage still trying to take resources that makes sense in other words i would have to ask whether or not that's something that would hinder the progress of the tree if i simply cut all the foliage off of this but left the branch going would the three or four months that the branch is still alive hinder take away from the grass or uh you know would that thing still try to start back budding and send out shoots and do all kind of stuff to mix up the game meaning that i should cut it off or um would i be able to make little twisty gins that would be a question i would have that i still have to find out about but uh as it stands if these graphs take and we're all on board and things work as they are as they are supposed to i will not have to return the tree back to Winter Garden, the um, Japanese black pine 
um, grafts that are on there will allow the tree to survive in a Japanese black pine growing environment, which this is. Speaking of which, our 17 year with seed is doing well. And our 75 year cork bark Japanese black pine is also doing well. I had a well thought out, just a, I know I'm kind of hopping around. I had a very well thought out question uh, this midweek from one of our viewers who was asking me about their Ponderosa pine care. Um, I answered them back in a lengthy response because I didn't want to leave them on the hook for very long with their questions. However, that prompted me to decide what our topic will be um, Saturday night. Saturday night live bonsai. Uh, this Saturday night will be a discussion regarding uh, single flush and uh, multi-flush black pines and how we uh, and how we treat them different. Last week's um, Saturday night live performance was exciting and very um, encouraging in the following in the following ways. One, you go into live perform. You make a decision that if you're going to do live TV, that you have to be ready for the most compromising things that could ever happen. Whatever it is that you haven't thought of that could happen that could make you look bad, you're that's going to happen. Also, the things that you dread will happen and think, well, I'll worry about that so much. It'll probably, no, that'll happen too. You you know, that's one of the few times you'll be right. Everything you see going wrong will go wrong and a bunch of stuff that you have never see going wrong will also go wrong. And in this case, that has a funny effect that it just makes me like it more. Uh, case in point, last week I did a 45 minute pantomime of what it would look like if you, uh, if Marcel Morceau did a bonsai show. In other words, it was, uh, it was no sound. I just kept losing. And it was like it wasn't any sound. I just kept losing sound. The good news is, you guys are amazing. The four or five people that signed on there stuck it out in a way that I just found, that I just found very encouraging. And also, uh, it's also encouraging to me as long as I can figure out what I did wrong. If I had to do another show, not had to, but if I was going into another show Saturday night, knowing that I could do that again, having not figured out what happened last time, that would be a little more unnerving. As it was, I um, I keep learning lessons. I uh, plugged everything into my laptop to charge it and then discovered that if you plug one piece of your uh, wireless mic into another piece of your wireless mic and then plug that into your laptop, none of those pieces get charged. So they were all, they were just sitting there on standby for a week when I thought all of my stuff was charging. So I basically went, uh, started a program with a dead mic, which still managed to hang in there for 10 minutes. And then when uh, that didn't work, restarting it bought me another three minutes. And then when that didn't work, swatch, uh, switching mics bought me another 10 minutes until that one was dead and then we were done. But uh, yeah. So this Saturday night show, we will go in with all of our uh, all of our systems charged. Our uh, topic is one that is very dear to me, and um, we should be able we should be able to cover in a way that um, that keeps me from looking too bad from those who know, and uh, proves to be good to be good information to those who don't that Chinese wisteria is going, I just have a feeling that's going to be so pretty. That is going to be, y'all, that is going to be so pretty. Like and subscribe if you guys have not already. We will probably do uh, another show between now and tomorrow and then do another one tomorrow. Um, it's the time. The time is good for making bonsai material that it, it's a good time to be doing bonsai because um we get to see the fruits of what uh everything is waking up and everything is coming around and uh 
There are times when it's not as, not as much fun as this, but this is what makes it fun. Uh, I appreciate you. Frida appreciates you. And thank you so much for watching.